All right, what's your name, where are you from, and why are you here today? Uh, I'm Al, I'm from Minnesota, I'm just here on vacation. Awesome, so about Donald Trump, what's your either favorite thing about him so far or your least favorite thing? Well, favorite, he is trying to stick to a lot of the uh, items on his list that he got elected for, he's trying. Um, I wish they would, as least favorite, some of his Twitter feeds and some of that stuff, getting into some of that, but I also wish that both sides would work together a lot more. All right, well, i got to put you on the spot now, because you said your, the, the things that you like were that he was sticking to his campaign promises, and they were build a wall, drain the swamp. Yeah. Uh, what, were, were those the big ones? Was there anything else? No, that's pretty good. I think that's quite good, actually. I mean, there's different views. But, you know, like build the wall, some people are very much against that. But I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing because you've got to stop the bleeding before you can help, help the people that are here and maybe make them citizens. You can't just open the doors and say, hey, everybody's a citizen, come on in. The, already we can't afford it with our Social Security and everything else and money going down the drain. So we've got to worry about our own people somewhat. And it's like, hey, you should pay, pay the people that have been paying in for how long? You know? Well, he hasn't really built much of a wall yet, has he? No, I don't think he has, but once again, that's both sides of the political spectrum, and they need to kind of work together on some of that, and I know there's not a lot of agreement on it, but at least maybe in the, the worst spots or whatever, they can build some wall. I'm not necessarily saying a fortress, but you've got to enforce it so the people aren't coming and going, uh, bringing illegal matters and stuff into our area. You know. well, well, let me ask you a bigger question then. Do you trust government? Uh, not that much. <laughs> That's the right answer, by the way. So do, do you trust government to control the free flow of, of human beings in, in any way, like through an immigration system, that they'd be able to, to do that effectively, that they could even keep people from sneaking into the country if we had a wall? Uh, is that the whole answer? I'm sure not. They look at drugs. I mean, it's still coming and going. You know, some people say, hey, legalize it all, and then there wouldn't be a problem. Would it or wouldn't it be? And now you got another problem that see people are hooked or you got to get them clean or whatever. So, I mean, there's a lot of different views on it. I'm, I'm not going to give you a right answer. Well, I don't want to go I don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole, but actually what we've seen in, in countries like Portugal where they've uh, legalized or decriminalized all drugs, the, the problems with not only the drug trade and the violence, but also the problems with usage, with addiction and, and, and the health hazards represented with them, they, they go down. But you, you don't trust government. So you're already you're already on the right side of this issue. But is it? <laughs> well, let me ask you then, if you want real security, should we have government making the borders or should we have borders based on private property in the free market? I don't know. I don't know that answer. Well, let me ask you a more fundamental question about freedom of movement, right? If you're born on one side of a government line or another, who is the government to tell you that you can't cross that line? Is that legitimate for government to interfere with an individual human being's right to travel on, on the earth? I don't think that's their right to travel across the borders. I mean, if they got a, the right and the okay to come across, it's fine. Yeah. So government has a right to stop them? From one country to another? Why wouldn't you? Well, because you really only have a right to control people on your own property. Like, I can't go onto your property and say who's allowed to show up at your party, right? I mean, I can't tell you who you're allowed to have in your house or not. But that would be the United States property, Mexico's property, Canada's property, right? Well, hold on, but you say, so, so you're saying that the government owns all of the property within its borders? Per se. I wouldn't say owned, no, but so th it, th that's the difference. Along the same line. Do, do, do you own property? I do. So do you feel that you should have the right to decide who comes on your property or should government be able to tell you who's allowed and who isn't? Well, I think I should, but you know what? I can't just build anywhere either because the government gets involved there. You know, I can't just put in a uh, apartment complex in, or in some areas, you know, they got covenants so you can't pa paint your house purple right next to your nice brown house, you know. Sounds like the government doesn't respect your private property rights at all. Well, do they not, or are they trying to protect your property rights? <laughs> Sometimes you don't want some of the stuff. I, I can make a junkyard right on top of your house, and you wouldn't like it, right? Well, if it was on your property next door, I don't have the right to tell you what you can and can't do on your own property, right? That's where counties and stuff, they do come involved. Well, what I'm saying, should they, not do they? Because we all know that they do. We all know that government interferes with your, your rights as an individual. But should it, or, or should it respect your freedom? I know where you're going. I see what you're saying. I... I agree with you to a certain degree, but there's a lot of, it's a very complicated issue, isn't it? It's, I, I don't think it is. I think government is what makes it complicated. 
I think government with, you know, the way that it talks to us and, and, and says, well, we're going to violate your rights, like you say, to protect you for your own good. I, I think that's the excuse. But you already don't trust government. I'm just trying to challenge you to not trust government a little more consistently. So you're trying to make me more uh, jaded and, uh, and unhappy in life. Huh? <laughs> well, no, because the, the, the general progress of humanity is to be more free over time. But the more we fall for these rackets, we fall for government, you know, government telling us that they can, they can protect us from immigrants as if that's a real threat, that they can protect us from ourselves and from our neighbors, that, that, that the slower that process goes and the more that we see that we should universally distrust government because it's a violent racket, the more we can move past this and be optimistic. I do see what you're saying. Like you're kind of talking like communism kind of taking over, you possibly, I mean, I would be, or you could go like Hitler's great plan. I mean, well, those, those are all, those are all lots more government. Right. That's what I said. I see where you're going with that. But I mean, if in, in moderation, I think it, you know, you got to have some government. It also keeps you from just, uh, you know, turning left to right, whatever you want to do on the highway too, right? If you didn't have rules, there is chaos. So you have to have some of that. Well, does, does government stop you from, from doing stuff by, by making it illegal? Or do you do what, what you believe is right and wrong regardless of government? Well, if you did that just using a real simple explanation, like I say, like traffic, then there'd be a lot more accidents, wouldn't there? You wouldn't want me to run in India. If I did whatever I wanted, my, I got the right of way, right? But does, does government stop people from doing that? Well, there's penalties. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It doesn't really stop people, right? I mean, see, even there, you're, you're making things unnecessarily complicated when the answer is really simple. Just let people be free. So let me ask you, what is government and what's the right amount of it? I can't even say on that. I mean, it's all over the boards. You could ask everybody and there'd be a different answer, right? Well, I would hope that until you decide exactly what it is, that you would not be advocating for more of it because obviously it's a very dangerous thing that you don't trust. So I, I, I hope that you could be, uh, you, you could take that challenge to at least look at government a little more consistently. There is very many inconsistencies, you're right. That's like, why would uh, like government officials be able to insider trade and we can't, et cetera. I mean, I know there's all kinds of different things. I mean, why do they have a different health plan than you have? I mean, I know some of these issues, but uh, it's like, yep. yep do you trust them because of that? No, it sounds like they're giving you the shaft, doesn't it? You know, <laughs> I mean, I can't say, but you know, I'll just kind of wrap it up there. There's a lot of inconsistencies and I understand that. That was perfect. It really seems like government is giving you the shaft. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.